right so uh, so what we did in the uh, last lecture was you know try to uh, explain how the uh, notion of normal family makes sense for a domain which includes the point at infinity okay and the technique as you uh, that we always follow is that you make a two piece definition okay you make one definition for the domain punctured at infinity which will be a domain in the usual plane and then to take care of a neighborhood of infinity what you do is that you invert the variable uh, z to 1 by w and instead of considering z equal to infinity you have to consider w equal to 0 so you take uh, you consider a neighborhood of 0 okay which is again uh, it is also a domain in the usual complex plane okay so you uh, therefore you are able to treat uh, uh, the case uh, of normality at infinity okay so uh, with that uh, we uh, uh, we saw that uh, both Montel's theorem and Marty's theorem hold good for uh, domains which uh, are which probably include the which may include the point at infinity okay that is domains in the external complex plane uh, and of course I also told you that it is a matter of terminology that uh, in uh, a family being normally sequentially compact that is sequentially compact with respect to normal convergence that is sometimes abbreviated to simply normal family okay. So uh, now uh, what we are going to do is you know as I told you we have to we have to um, we have come very close to the proof of the Picard theorem which is which was the main aim of these all these lectures okay and uh, but but before that there is there is there is something called there is a theorem which is called as Zalkman's lemma which we have to use okay and see this has got to do with uh, 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 a characterization of non normality okay so uh, what we uh, to, so so in order to you know uh, motivate this zalkman's lemma okay uh, what we are going to do is we are going to try to analyze uh, what happens uh, uh, to a normal family at a point okay so uh, so let me make this definition we 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 define normality of a family at a single point to be normality in a in a small neighborhood of that point in an open in, a, in, a, in an open disk containing that point okay. So this is just like definition of analytic, analyticity. So you see uh, you say a function is analytic if it is differentiable not only at, at a point but in, an, in a small neighborhood of that point. So in the same way normality is also defined at a point by requiring the property in a small open disk surrounding that point or a non empty open set containing that point okay. Uh, well of course any, any open set containing that point is non empty. So uh, uh, the, the, the reason for this definition is that normality is a local property okay to uh, uh, if you have for example uh, 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 a cover of your space which is countable and uh, uh, if you have if you if your if your domain can be covered by countably many open sets and on each of these open sets if your family is normal then on the whole domain also the family will be normal because you can use because of countability you can use a diagonalization argument okay so um, so normality is a local property okay so the first thing i'm going to start with is uh, uh, so uh, so I'll, I'll put the heading as uh, motivation uh, let me use a different color uh, uh, motivation for uh, uh, zaltman's lemma which is actually a characterization Uh, of non normality so what we'll do is we make the following definition uh, 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 let script f uh, be a family of uh, uh, meromorphic functions uh, defined in a neighborhood of a point z0 okay of course this point z0 could also be the point at infinity but let us assume that z0 is a point in the plane the case of you know how to treat the case at infinity okay. Uh, so uh, suppose this is a family of meromorphic functions defined in a neighborhood of z0 that means it is defined in an open disk containing z0 okay. Uh, uh, we say we say uh, the family script f is normal 
at z0 if it is normal uh, in an op in in a, in, a, in a neighborhood of z0 in open uh, neighborhood of z0 okay so uh, well so that's the definition and <coughs> uh, so the question is uh, uh, suppose a family and of course a family is normal on a domain if it is normal at every point okay uh, uh, further uh, 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 family is normal on a domain if and only if it is normal at each point. So, I should not say further in fact, this is a <coughs> this is a remark. So, this is a remark that you can check I mean it just says that the notion of normality is a local prop normality is a local property normality is a local property uh, fine. So, so the, the, the so here is the question the question is I now have a family defined in a neighborhood of a point okay it is a family of meromorphic functions and the question and it is given to me that this family is normal okay and I want to I want to analyze how the family behaves at that point okay. So, the, the it is the clue the clue to Zalkman's lemma or at least uh, an, an understanding or motivation for Zalkman's lemma is uh, trying to understand this okay. So, what we will do is let us uh, so let uh, uh, so, so I call this as local analysis of uh, normal family. So, let script f be uh, meromorphic in uh, meromorphic uh, 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 be a family let script f be a family of meromorphic functions uh, on uh, mod z minus z not uh, less than or equal to rho ok. Uh, so, you see mod z minus z not less than or equal to rho is uh, actually a closed set it is a compact set ok. Uh, if that is that is provided z not is a point in the usual complex plane if z not is infinity then you know you have to rewrite this as a <coughs> uh, you, you must rewrite this as uh, in the you should not use the Euclidean metric but you have to use the spherical metric ok. Uh, but I am assuming for simplicity that z naught is a point in the plane ok and the, and this is a close and bounded set I am I am I am taking a compact set because I can choose such a row uh, certainly uh, it is a family of meromorphic functions at the point z naught. So, it is defined in a neighborhood of z naught. So, it is defined on a small enough disk which contains z naught and if you take a smaller enough radius then the closed disk centered at z naught of that radius will also uh, be in the domain where the meromorphic functions are defined the where the family is defined. So, I am taking without loss of generality this closed set because uh, the reason is I want a compact set so that I can uh, you know I can get uniform convergence whenever I talk about convergence uh, you know uh, uniform convergence it happens only on compact sets it is normal convergence and whenever I am talk about uniform boundedness it happens only on compact sets. So, for everything I need compact I need a compact set that is the reason why I am doing this ok. So, what it means is that the family is defined on a bigger uh, open set which contains this closed set ok. Now, now you see uh, what we want to do is we want to really uh, uh, so you know let me draw a diagram. So, here is so here is z naught all right and here is this there is this uh, there is this disc centered at z naught radius rho. So, this is the disc centered z naught radius rho and the point is uh, you give me a family uh, you give me a function small f in the family script f ok. And what I want to really do is I want to really analyze this function uh, in that small disk ok. I, I want to analyze this function uh, this function in the small disk and how do I do it. Uh, so, what I do is you know uh, I have to look closer at the 
uh, at the small disk. So, what I actually do is zoom in okay? and how do I zoom in? So, it is by scaling. Okay? So, what I do is that I put, uh, I define g for every function f in the family, I define this g and what is this g? This g is defined with the new variable zeta and this is defined as f of uh, z0 plus epsilon times uh, zeta. I put this condition, I, I, I make this definition. So, what is happening is that this, this, this is in, uh, this is in, this is in the z plane. So, the variable here is z, so this is also the complex plane. And then I have another, I have another uh, complex plane, okay. And this is the, uh, well, this is the zeta plane. So, the variable here is zeta, all right. And what I do is, I take this, I, I take this unit disk. Okay, I take this unit disk. Uh, this is uh, 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 this is unit disk mod zeta less than one less than one. Okay, I take this disk, and now I am defining this function g as a function of zeta. Okay, and what is g? It's actually you know uh, you have you have just magnified the behavior of g at the the, the the value of g at zeta is the value of f at z naught plus epsilon times zeta. So what it means is that you know if you uh, 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 if if you start with a uh, 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 yeah and and of course you know I'm assuming that epsilon is less than rho, okay. So you know if I if I take uh, uh, if I take this disk uh, of radius one uh, centered at the origin with the variable zeta, then if I multiply by epsilon, if I take epsilon zeta, it will become disk of radius epsilon, okay. So it will be a smaller disk like this. Okay, and 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 this this will have radius epsilon. Okay, and then if I add z naught to it, I'm just translating it to give me a, a small disk uh, of radius uh, uh, epsilon centered at z naught. That's what this uh, that's what this does. Okay, so you you're just multiplying epsilon to zeta, then you are adding z naught. So that's translation by z naught. Okay, so basically what you're doing is that uh, when you do this. You know, uh, you're you're actually looking at this. You're looking at this small disk uh, centered at z dot radius epsilon, and so you know, uh, in principle, for what values uh, for what values of zeta is uh, is g defined? So you see, you'll see that g is defined uh, uh, for uh, should be rho by epsilon. See, if mod zeta is less than rho by epsilon, okay, then mod epsilon zeta will be less than rho. And mod z naught plus epsilon zeta will be less than, therefore, uh, also less than rho. Okay. See, uh, mod zeta is less than uh, uh, rho by epsilon means that you know mod epsilon zeta uh, is less than rho. Okay. And what does this tell you? This tells you that the distance of epsilon zeta from the origin is at most rho. And therefore, if you add z naught to epsilon zeta, the distance of z naught plus epsilon zeta to z naught is at most rho. So, this is, so you see this g is defined on this, on this disk and you see this disk is actually, uh, uh, see the, uh, this disk is larger, see because you see rho, uh, the original disk centered at z naught has radius rho, alright. Now the radius has become rho by epsilon and epsilon being smaller, rho by epsilon should be larger. If you think of epsilon to be, uh, you know epsilon is less than rho, so rho by epsilon is greater than 1. Okay. So, what, what you have done is by this transformation, this disk centered at z naught radius rho, okay, if you want to study the function value uh, uh, set of the values of the function f there, the behavior of the function f there, what you have done is you have actually zoomed it by constructing this function g. So, g is a kind of zooming function. Okay. It is like you have a microscope uh, or a telescope and you have 10x zoom, 20x zoom, you see that also in cameras these days, okay, you have 5x zoom and so on. So this is some uh, uh, so many x zoom and the zoom is one the zooming factor is one by epsilon. Okay, uh, the original disk of radius rho has now become zoomed to uh, disk of radius rho by epsilon. Okay, and well uh, the point is that uh, 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 and of course rho by epsilon will be slightly bigger. Okay, you 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 will get so so this is epsilon this this thing will be rho by epsilon. And it's in this bigger disk, open disk, that uh, the function g is defined. And studying this uh, function g in this bigger disk is 
the same as studying the function f in uh, the original disk ok. So, uh, you know I will I'll, I'll, I'll write it like this I will write g of zeta is equal to zoom I will write I will I'll think of it as zooming zoom the function f centered at z naught uh, by a by a magnification factor 1 by epsilon and use the variable zeta ok I will use this notation ok. So, uh, when I say uh, f zoom f z naught 1 by epsilon zeta you are zooming the function f centered at z naught so you are zooming uh, uh, your zoom is centered at z naught ok and 1 by epsilon is a magnification factor and zeta is the variable of the zoomed function ok. Now well the uh, so, so this is a this is how you you zoom into the behavior of a function at a point ok. Now uh, I am given that this function uh, I am given that this family script f is uh, is normal suppose I am given it is normal at z naught suppose it is uh, suppose I am given it is normal uh, in this closed uh, uh, in this closed disk centered at z naught radius rho which means it is actually normal in an open set which contains that closed disk ok. Suppose that happens and let us see what uh, what does what it means for us. So, so, so let me con continue uh, like this suppose now that you know script f is normal in uh, mod z minus z naught uh, less than or equal to rho ok. Uh, by that I mean uh, 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 it is it is normal in a slightly bigger open disk ok. Uh, then uh, so what does normality mean? Uh, it, it means actually normally sequentially compact it is the correct notion of compactness for us when we do complex analysis ok. Uh, so, what it means is that you give me any sequence of functions in script f I can always find a subsequence which converges normally ok it is it is normal sequential compactness it is sequential compactness with respect to normal convergence. So, so, so given uh, any sequence uh, f n uh, in script f we can find a subsequence let me call that as f n k that converges normally uh, in uh, mod z minus z naught uh, less than rho ok. Uh, I, I can put less than or equal to in fact, mod z minus z naught less than or equal to rho is actually uh, uh, compact and therefore it will converge even uniformly there ok. So, it converges normally. So, what happens is that uh, uh, you will get this, this subsequence f n k of z it will go to some uh, function f z ok. And uh, f is a normal limit of meromorphic functions. So, you know what is going to happen you have already seen this a normal limit of meromorphic functions is either identically infinity or it is also a meromorphic function it could even be analytic ok. So, uh, uh, then uh, of course, uh, then as we have seen um, uh, either uh, f is identically infinity or f is meromorphic this is something that we have seen all right. But the point I want to do uh, want to uh, want to em emphasize is that uh, is the following issue you see uh, you have you have these functions f and k they are converging to f all right and uh, what is happening is that now you know uh, mind you I have the zoomed functions ok I have these zoomed functions by uh, zooming factor epsilon less than rho. So, look at the zoomed functions. So, what happens is that I, I, I take g and k which is actually the the zooming of so g and k of zeta is the zooming of uh, f and k uh, uh, with respect uh, centered at z naught uh, with a magnification factor 1 by epsilon and I am using the variable zeta ok. And similarly I get the limit I get a limit uh, I get a zoomed function for the limit function also. So, I get g also is equal to uh, uh, zoom the zoomed function of uh, f uh, centered at z naught uh, magnification factor 1 by epsilon uh, my uh, variable is zeta ok. So, this is g of zeta. So, uh, so I have that and of course you know uh, 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 if f and k uh, converges to f 
then the zoomed functions of the f n case namely the g n case will converge to the zoom function of uh, f which is g and this is just because the zooming is just a scaling followed by a translation okay. So after all what is the zooming, the zooming is uh, you multiply uh, uh, you you multiply zeta by epsilon and 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 then you add z naught to it. Okay, that's just a in fact the in fact it's actually a bilinear transformation. It's a linear fractional transformation. It's a Mobius transformation. Okay, so it's a uh, so it will preserve uh, all properties, uh, convergence, everything. Okay, so uh, you get this. Now you see. Uh, so so let me write this. This is normal. Uh, normally, so here also I'll get. So this will imply that this will also converge normally, okay. And the the point I want to make is that you see, I have assumed that the original uh, the original family is normal, okay. And we have seen, uh, namely Marty's theorem, that normality is equivalent to the spherical derivatives being normally bounded, okay. So you, if you recall, you know. Uh, Marty's theorem says that a family of meromorphic functions uh, on a domain, the domain could even be a domain in the extended complex plane, it could contain the point at infinity. Uh, such a family is normal if and only if uh, the, uh, the spherical derivatives of those functions, the family of spherical derivatives is normally uniformly bounded. So it's, it should be on every compact subset of the domain, uh, the family of spherical derivatives should have a uniform bound. Okay. So uh, by Marty's theorem, you know that uh, the family script f itself has a uh, has uh, if you if you take the spherical derivatives then that has a uniform bound okay so uh, le let me write that down by marty's theorem uh, script f has uh, a uniform bound so script f hash so when i put script f upper hash it means the family of spherical derivatives of the functions in f okay uh, this, this has a uniform bound in uh, mod z minus z naught less than or equal to rho. I have this, okay, because mod z minus z naught less than or equal to rho is a compact set, all right. And on a compact set, I will have a uniform bound for the spherical derivatives, and that's equivalent to norm normality. Okay, this is something that I have. This is Marty's theorem. So, uh, uh, so, the, so, uh, uh, so, what does it mean? It means that the if you take the if you take any uh, if you take any uh, 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 function f in uh, 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 so let me not use f let me use h because I have already used f for the limit. Uh, uh, if you take a h in f uh, then uh, uh, h hash this is a spherical derivative of h is just an m uh, uh, for all h okay. and, and same m. So you have this, you have uniform bound, all right, and this bound applies to all members of uh, spherical derivatives of all members of the family F script F. So it up, so it applies also to the uh, F n case, okay. So so in particular, what you will have is uh, you know uh, uh, you will have that uh, uh, F n k uh, ash uh, the spherical derivatives. Uh, uh, you see these things are going to be bounded by m this is going to happen because all these fnk's are anyway in the family okay but you know uh, i we have also seen this earlier if a family of function meromorphic functions converges normally to a limit function then the spherical derivatives will also converge okay the taking the spherical derivative will respect uh, convergence okay so uh, you so you also have from uh, oops you also have from here uh, you also have from here if you want uh, so I need to go like this uh, uh, that f n k if I take the spherical derivatives that will go to f hash okay you have this okay and uh, uh, and of course you know uh, uh, if I if I uh, uh, by the same token if I do it to the g n case the spherical derivatives of the g n case will go to the spherical g derivative of g okay. Uh, mind you g n k is just f n k translated and scaled. So when you translate and scale a function its nature does not change. So if you take a meromorphic function and translate and scale it you will again get a meromorphic function okay. After all translating and scaling is not going to change the nature of singularities okay. 
and uh, if you translate and scale an analytic function you will again get an analytic function okay and so on and so forth. So uh, the g and k's are also meromorphic functions and uh, uh, mind you uh, uh, you have to remember that uh, uh, the I am considering the fn k's in mod z minus z0 less than or equal to rho uh, but I am actually uh, um, considering the g and k's in uh, uh, mod zeta less than uh, uh, rho by epsilon okay that is the that is the disk that is the zoomed disk centered at the origin where the zoomed functions are being looked at okay. So, uh, uh, so, so, you, you, so I let, let me let me let me write this here on on mod zeta less than rho by epsilon okay uh, this is there uh, epsilon is less than rho right. So, this is, an, this is a quantity greater than 1 fine. So, uh, I have this uh, uh, and I also have the same thing for the for these guys I will also have g n k ash uh, going to uh, uh, g ash all right and of course uh, it is again normal this is also normal okay and the point is that uh, uh, but there is there is there is an inequality coming now. See what is g n k? g n k of zeta is by definition f n k of z naught plus epsilon zeta. This is a zoomed function. So, uh, so what is g n k ash of zeta? What is it? What is it? It's see it is by definition it is supposed to be two times the modulus of the derivative of g n k uh, with respect to zeta divided by one plus modulus of g n k <coughs> of zeta the whole square this is the definition of a spherical derivative okay and uh, uh, but then this is uh, what is the g n k dash zeta in the numerator it is the derivative of g n k with respect to zeta it is the derivative with respect to zeta okay and mind you this uh, formula for spherical derivative uh, also works when zeta is a pole okay we have seen that you know uh, by continuity uh, if the pole is of higher order then the spherical derivative at the pole is 0 if the pole is a simple pole then spherical derivative of the pole is actually 2 divided by modulus of the residue at the pole which is something that we have seen already okay. So, uh, there is no problem if zeta is, is a pole okay this formula works but then you know uh, if I differentiate g and k with respect to zeta it is the same as differentiating f and k and then uh, you know by the chain rule differentiating the, the, the argument of the f and k with respect to zeta and that will bring me a multiple of epsilon. So, what I will get is I will get I will get epsilon times f n k ash of z this is what I get okay uh, not z in fact I have to plug in the right uh, substitution uh, scaled variable z naught plus uh, epsilon zeta this is what I get okay. And uh, but but what is uh, but the f n k's are all bounded by what the f n k's are all bounded by m all right. So, this is bounded by epsilon m okay. So, the model of the story is that because you because of your scaling okay uh, uh, the uh, uh, see what you must understand is that uh, uh, you zoomed uh, the uh, the small disk centered at z naught radius rho uh, to a larger disk okay you scaled and you got the zoomed function but what has happened is that the bound for the spherical derivative has become smaller <laughs> because it has got multiplied by this uh, uh, the inverse of the zooming factor the zooming factor is 1 by epsilon where epsilon is very small okay then uh, uh, your your bound uh, the bound for the zoomed function becomes much more smaller okay. Now that is what it says now this is true for every n k but you know g n k uh, g n k hash converges normally to g hash and each of the g n k is uh, is bounded by epsilon m therefore you know g hash will also be bounded by epsilon m. So, these two put together will tell you that uh, g hash will also be bounded by epsilon m. So, this will happen all right. So, uh, uh, that is because of a normal convergence okay. So, the so the moral of the story is that uh, uh, so this is what is happening. So, so what have we shown so far uh, you take a point z naught a point where a family is normal okay and then you take any sequence in the family you will get a convergence subsequence normally convergent subsequence you look at those those functions in the subsequence okay and zoom them then the zoomed functions their spherical derivatives become very small 
and in fact the zoom functions uh, uh, if you take the if you take the limit of the zoom functions the limit function will be a meromorphic function whose spherical derivative is very small that is what that is what it says okay. And now you know, uh, so this is the first step of the argument. Now what I am going to do is I am going to introduce a level of com, uh, a level of uh, uh, complication uh, uh, by what I am by doing the following thing. What you do is instead of considering a single epsilon, you consider a sequence of epsilons going to zero. Imagine you are considering. Uh, I am using the same epsilon here for all the functions. Okay, but suppose for G n I use an epsilon n okay, and such that the epsilon n's are going to go to 0. Okay, that means epsilon, that means I am doing ultra zooming, I am I am zooming into smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller neighborhoods of Z0. Okay. If I do that, then what will happen is that you, you can you can guess what is going to happen. This g hash uh, will be 0 because see g hash will uh, the on the thing on the left side g n hash g n k hash that is going to be bounded by epsilon n k m okay and if I take limit as n k tends to 0 epsilon n k is going to go to 0. So, epsilon n k m is going to go to 0 because m is anyway finite quantity therefore, g hash is going to go to 0 and what does it mean if g hash goes to 0 it means that g is a constant a spherical derivative of a function cannot be 0 unless it is a constant it can be even the constant function that is uniformly infinity mind you the for, for the constant function which is uniformly infinity also the spherical derivative is 0 okay. In line with the fact that uh, the philosophy that whenever you have a constant function the derivative of any type should be 0 okay. So, so the moral of the story is this is the moral of the story the moral of the story is that if you if you zoom in uh, uh, a family of uh, uh, you know convergent uh, normally convergent family of functions at a point okay then the limit function is going to be constant that is the whole point okay. So, let me add that uh, level of comp uh, complication but now there is something uh, very nice what is happening is that this uh, so, so let me put this in, uh, in, a, in a different color here uh, whatever is happening is uh, uh, happening happens uh, in uh, mod zeta lesser than epsilon I am sorry rho by uh, I think it was rho by epsilon okay it, this was the disk where everything is happening okay. But uh, now you know if I make these epsilons go to 0 okay by choosing epsilon n's which go to 0 something nice is going to happen as epsilon n's goes to go to 0 rho by epsilon n's go to infinity. So, your disks are becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and the beautiful thing is that any compact subset of the complex plane the zeta plane will become contained in a sufficiently large disk and therefore, you get a family of functions uh, for which you can talk about normal convergence on the whole plane okay. So, this g hash will be defined on the whole plane and you will get a constant function okay that is the that is what I that is the whole point okay. So, let me write this down uh, uh, now let us consider yeah, uh, a sequence of uh, epsilons say epsilon n going to 0. Uh, so, epsilon going to 0 plus so they are all positive quantities and and you know uh, 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 let me say uh, say even uh, uh, I mean uh, say even decreasing ok. Uh, anyway sequence going to 0 uh, eventually is going to be a decreasing sequence right. Uh, uh, strictly decreasing sequence you can think of it as uh, smaller and smaller uh, neighborhoods ok. Then uh, what happens is that uh, uh, you you p we get uh, for uh, you know uh, so here is a funny thing you define g n of zeta to be you zoom f so you take f uh, you write z0 plus epsilon n zeta okay this is actually the zooming of the function f uh, centered at z0 A scaling factor is not is now 1 by epsilon n and the variable I am using is zeta okay and mind you this 1 by epsilon n is going to go to infinity 
because epsilon n is going to 0 plus 1 by epsilon n is going to infinity that means I am actually I am I am I am I am doing ultra zooming you know at the point set on and I am looking at the zoom functions all right. Now uh, see uh, this is this is defined as I told you this is defined in mod zeta less than rho by epsilon n okay and the point is that this goes to infinity this goes to plus infinity as 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 n tends to infinity because epsilon n goes to 0 rho is a fixed quantity right and uh, note that uh, what will happen is that g n k hash uh, uh, will go to g hash as before okay this will be normal but the beautiful thing is this will be normally on c on the whole of c that is the beautiful point earlier this g n k hash going to g hash was on uh, only on this on this bounded domain it was on mod zeta less than rho by epsilon it was normal on the convergence g n k hash going to g hash was it was normal convergence on this bounded domain but now since these epsilons are becoming smaller this bound the g n's the g n's are being defined on bigger and bigger domains okay that is an increasing sequence of disks open disks centered at the origin that will eventually cover the whole plane. So, it will eventually cover uh, any compact subset of the plane and therefore on any compact subset of the plane I can say that this sequence uh, is going to converge normally because I will have to consider the sequence only beyond a certain stage okay. See whenever you are looking at convergence the first finitely no matter how large the first finitely many terms do not matter okay. So, uh, so the moral more of the story is that uh, the in if you by the advantage of, of taking smaller and smaller epsilons is that you are zooming into the point uh, you are zooming into the behavior of the functions at that point but then uh, you get a limit function which is defined on the whole plane. So, you get a meromorphic function on the plane. So, this g it will be a meromorphic function on the whole plane okay. g will be a meromorphic function on the whole plane alright. And uh, the 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 nice thing is that uh, as I was telling you, uh, the bound for uh, 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 the bound for the bound for the spherical derivatives of Gn will be what it will be epsilon nk times m. So you will get Gnk hash uh, is bounded by epsilon nk times m. Okay, because you know earlier we got the bound as epsilon m for uh, uh, for Gnk. But now the epsilon uh, is epsilon nk in this case, so I will get this okay and this goes to g hash and uh, as k tends to infinity and well this goes to 0 as k tends to infinity. So the, uh, so the moral of the story is g hash is 0 and this implies that g is a constant. And, and by when I say g is a constant mind you g could be the constant function which is identically infinity that is also allowed okay. So you know how do you argue that g is a constant mind you g becomes uh, uh, g anyway the limit function g is meromorphic on the whole plane okay. So it has only poles uh, on the plane okay and uh, outside the poles it is an analytic function okay. But outside the poles uh, the spherical derivative is 0 means ordinary derivative is 0 okay and if the ordinary derivative is 0 the function is constant. So except for these isolated set of points which are poles everywhere else the function is constant and those points cannot be there you cannot have even a single pole because if you have a pole as the fun as the as the points approach the pole the function goes uh, the modulus of the function values goes to infinity how can it be constant in a deleted neighborhood of a pole. So that force of the function has to be identically constant that is how you get g is identically constant g is only a meromorphic function okay. So this is the important thing. the The important thing is that uh, if you if you take uh, if you take a normal family. So what have we proved? You take a point where a family is normal, okay, and you take any convert you take any sequence in the normal family. You can find a con normally convergent subsequence. If you take those sequence of functions and do zoom in at the point, you are able to construct. See, they will the the zoomed functions will converge to a constant function that is what it says okay. If you 
if you look at a, a normally convergent family of uh, meromorphic functions zoomed at a point, you will get only a constant function limit. That is what you are saying. Okay. This is the behavior of a normal family at a point. Okay. And uh, what I want to do next is introduce another level of complication okay. and this next level of complication is to vary z0 also. Okay. So, instead of considering a point z0, all this time I had fixed z0, but now what you do is you take a sequence of points zn which goes to z0 okay. and at each zn you zoom to epsilon n for the function fn and do this process okay. and you will still get the same result okay. and the beautiful thing is that uh, whatever you get there okay, that behavior is good enough to characterize normal families. Okay. And the point about Zalkman's lemma is the negativity of that statement. Okay. So, uh, roughly Zalkman's lemma is a lemma that is uh, it is actually a theorem which will explain when a family is not normal it will give you necessary and sufficient conditions for a family to be not normal and guess what the condition will be. The, the condition will be that you can do all this, but the limit function that you get g, it will be non-constant. That will be the only difference. You will get a limit function which will be a non-constant meromorphic function. So, its spherical derivative will not be 0 okay. and that is a characterization of non-normality. Okay. That is the, see this is the motivation for Zalkman's lemma. So, I will uh, in, in, in my next lecture I will uh, tell you how to uh, instead of considering z0 consider a sequence zn which goes to z0 and have the same argument okay, and, and continue with Zalkman's lemma alright. So, I will stop here.